Hey guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Chris and I'm a surgical service registrar in pediatric surgery. And today I wanted to talk to you about how to build an efficient research portfolio when you're just starting out and you've never done anything like that before. Starting a medical research can seem like a really intimidating thing when you're just starting out. What research project do you choose? Who do you talk to about getting there? What's the process for putting it all together? At least that was how I felt when I first started out. And now four years later with four published papers, I wanted to share some of the lessons that I've learned along the way about how to build a research portfolio in surgery that can push you forward in your career. The first lesson is finding your people. Within any department, there are gonna be some people who are more interested in research and some people who are less interested. And certainly there will be some senior clinicians who probably supervise a lot of concurrent research projects. And so if you find those people, they can act as mentors and also advise you about what projects are currently happening in the department, what the level of complexity of those projects are, and whether any of them would be suitable for you to start out with as a way of stepping into the research field and getting something down on the books. The second step is getting an open researcher and contributor ID or an ORCID ID. This is an alphanumeric code which acts as an international identifier for all of the research projects that you put out into the world. This is a really efficient way of tracking all of the work that you do across time and across different journals, such that when you're applying for jobs uh, or when you're advertising the work that you've done, you can easily communicate that fact and identify the papers against your name across any institution in the world. The next step is to choose something simple. Now, I know it's tempting that when you're starting out in research, you want to go for a systematic review or a randomized control trial or something that seems to have a lot more heft or weight behind it. But when you're starting out with the process, unless you have former experience in another area, keeping it simple is definitely the way to go. So the best way to start is with something like a case report. Most departments will have an interesting case that they would like to have presented in a international journal or in a conference, or that they just find interesting. And so find those cases and someone who can mentor you in the process and choose that to write up initially. There's a couple of reasons for why this is a good idea. The first one is that the time frame will be fairly short in the scheme of things. Case reports will usually take a few months from inception all the way to publication. And that's a fairly quick turnaround time when you're trying to get a feel for research and build a reputation as a researcher within a department or within an area. The second thing is that it will give you an idea of the stages of the process that a paper needs to go through from when it's written up all the way to when it's published. And there's a lot of stages that don't have anything to do with the type of paper that you're doing, but just the logistics of getting something published in a journal. And it's worth starting with a simple project so that you can get an idea for that. Specifically, finding the author's guidelines, choosing a journal, constructing your paper in a way that fits with those author's guidelines, so putting together all of the parts that you need for submission, and then going through the peer review process before finally getting to the publication process. Keeping this simple will make life easier. The next step is to take your publication and link it with conference opportunities. There's two reasons for this. The first one is that when you've published a paper, then it has inherent value to it and you have an obligation to share that with the profession and make sure that it's advertised widely, what the lessons are and how it can be applied. The second reason is that it gives you an opportunity to practice presenting to the profession and network with people who are probably in some cases a lot more experienced than you about what you could do better, what you could do differently, and potentially join with them on projects in the future. Once you've got an ORCID ID and you've published a paper and you've presented it, the next step is to start doing more projects. And I'd advise you to be strategic about this. Choose papers that are progressively more complex, such that you're building on the knowledge that you've received from every previous experience. So it might be that if you've started with a case report, the next thing you want to do is a case series with a literature review. Or if you've got a case series under your belt, then maybe you want to start a systematic review or a randomized controlled trial or perhaps even you want to link it in with a higher degree, like a master's of philosophy or a PhD, whatever it happens to be, use that previous experience that you've had to add layers of complexity to your work such that it becomes an educational experience for you as well. And you build competency and capacity to research into the future. Okay, finally, try not to abandon projects when circumstances change. So if you've taken on something and you find that it's really difficult to complete because you don't have enough time or as much time as you did previously, Consider putting into place these strategies to try and stop you from being in a position where you can't complete it all together. The first is to try and renegotiate the time frame with your supervisor. Most research projects are not going to be terribly time critical. They need to be done efficiently, but you've got some scope. And so sitting down with your supervisor and talking about what the competing objectives are on your time can allow you to do that. The second thing is consider adding people to your team. If you find that you can't get the work done by yourself in the time frame that you need to, then maybe pulling in two or three other people who are also interested in building up a research portfolio 
but don't have the time to dedicate to a project themselves is all that you need to get it done. The third thing is to consider handing it off to somebody who's maybe got a little bit more time and is interested in the project if you can't contribute anymore. In that way, you might still be able to have your work recognized in a second or third author position, or maybe you can help with the review toward the end. Uh, but that project still gets completed and somebody else gets value out of that work and is able to contribute that to the profession. Okay guys, I hope you found that helpful. If you've enjoyed the video and you want to see more, please subscribe to the channel and click the like button below. It really helps. And until next time, enjoy the work.